Hi, my name is Kira Mori and I'm a professional rigger. This video is made in partnership with Live2D to show you guys the new features of Cubism 5. The software is actually called Cubism and not Live2D, but it's okay. We have all accepted it. I'll be showing you Cubism 5's new features, which are dark mode. I am very, very thankful for this. High DPI display support for that crunchy, sharp look. Custom workspaces, better auto mesh generation, better blend shapes, and an AI function to automatically generate face movements. Very interesting. If you still don't have a pro license, if you're thinking of starting accepting commissions, there is a coupon in the description for annual and three-year licenses. Yeah, let's get on with the video. This is one of the features I am most excited about. I just really like having dark mode on the stuff that I stare at a lot. It makes it easy on the eyes. To change from light mode to dark mode, go to File, Environment, Settings, and change the color theme to dark. You can also change the background color of the modeling area if you want to get rid of all the light in your life. I mean in Cubism 5. <laughs> Doesn't it look nice? I, yeah, I love dark mode very much. I'm not sure how applicable this is for me, but Live 2D should look sharper for certain users. Cubism 4.2 and Cubism 5 look a little bit different on my drawing monitor. So I guess I kind of benefited from this feature. <laughs> this is actually a pretty cool feature. You can now save how your work area looks like, just like in drawing programs like Clip Studio. It's neat that you could experiment and see what works for you. So go to Window, go to Workspace Settings, and you can add your workspace. Be sure to switch to your newly made workspace first before you move things around to make sure that your modifications get saved to the right place. I actually have two displays and there are some palettes like the log palette right here, which I don't actively use a lot when rigging. So I'll just drag these palettes and give more space for the rigging plus the parameter and deformer tree palettes. If I need the other palettes again, I can just switch workspaces. If I am allowed to make a suggestion, I think I would like it if the palettes can be minimized when they are dragged out so I don't really have to worry about not accessing them and you know having to switch workspaces just to get them back. Cubism 5 has a better auto mesh generation feature, which is honestly super helpful so I don't end up with, you know, messed up art meshes anymore. This is what auto mesh looks like for Cubism 4.2 and Cubism 5. I feel like I will still do manual meshing a lot, especially for head parts when I'm doing high range rigs, but this feature will be super helpful still for really big layers or relatively simple shapes. And blend shapes. I just want to say that I love blend shapes. Since they were first released, I tried finding ways to use them and now I actually use them a lot in my rigs, especially for physics. I initially wanted to use blend shapes for rigging expression and switching textures, but the previous version of Cubism won't allow me to change an object's opacity. But that changes in Cubism 5. Thank you, devs. There's even extended interpolation. I'll surely be using blend shapes more for physics. Anyway, enough gushing about this new feature. I'll actually list the things that you can change using blend shapes. So now you can key rotation deformers to blend shapes, opacity, draw order, multiply and screen colors, have extended interpolation, and glue. But all of the things that can be modified under blend shapes, I'm pretty sure that people will come up with newer possibilities. I'm kind of excited to experiment with them if I do have the time. AI function. I feel like a lot of companies are finding new ways to use AI and the results are actually very interesting. I actually like what Live2D has done. The company knows that a huge portion of their user base make VTuber models and having a tool that could make face rigging faster is quite helpful. I removed all of the objects keyed to angle X and Y for this demonstration. I am using Mao, uh, which is a sample model by Live2D. You can find it on their website or you can just Google it. It's the first thing on there. What we need to do first is to group all of the parts into their left and right sides. For the eyebrows, we group them into eyebrow L and R. We do the same for the eyes. The eyeball, which some people might call it irises. The nose, the mouth, the face parts. 
as well as the ears into left and right folders. The next thing that we need to do is click on this menu on the parameter palette and go to auto generation of face motion and let's generate our deformers first. The software automatically detects the folders or parts and also change the number of divisions. For the face, I will be doing 10 by 10 and for the mouth, I'll be increasing it to something like 8 by 8. And now, I think this will automatically go to generation face motion. Now that our deformers have been generated, you can see it right here and you put them right here. Or you could make your own deformers if you prefer that. Click on what angle we need. We want to generate automatically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't don't click the big blue button. You won't be generating anything. So I think we generate yeah, we generated angle X first. We're going to adjust the stuff a little bit to fit our needs. Okay, now that we're done with that, we can generate angle Y now. Actually, I feel like this is already pretty good. Yeah, except for the blush, so we'll be, we'll be doing that ourselves. Then we generate the corners. Click OK. There we have it. And ta-da! Done, but not quite. Every rigger has their own style and the output of the AI function will not always reflect that. I would personally use this function as a starting point to save time setting up and I'll just go and modify it a bit to reflect how I'd rig faces for smaller ranges. So riggers get ready to save quite some time with this tool. And just to summarize, the new features of Cubism 5 are as follows. Dark mode, support for high DPI displays, custom workspaces, better auto mesh generation, buff to blend shapes, and an AI function to save time for face rigging. I am pretty happy with a lot of these features and I am looking forward to using the new version of Cubism. I mean, I'm using the beta but I, I'm gonna wait for the stable release too. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. The features are geared towards giving riggers an easier time doing their work and I would like to thank the devs for their hard work and the time that they spent on making this new version as well as those people who are active in the feedback forums. You guys also helped a lot. Again, if you are thinking of getting Cubism, please consider using the coupon I have in the description so you can see save a little bit of money. It's only applicable for annual and three-year subscriptions. Thank you again, Live2D, for partnering with me for this video. If anyone is still watching at this point, I would like to thank you as well. I hope this video was helpful in giving you a quick overview of the new features of Cubism 5. And I'll see you guys in the next one.